Hyundai has just somewhat orgasmically announced that the extremely fun i20N and i30N hatches, two of my all-time favourite cars, the availability is now officially slightly less crap. I'm John Logan from AutoExpert.com.au. New cars cheap. Australia only. Website. Card. After taking a year off recently, Hyundai, or Hyundai, as they are known in America, has just reopened the order books in Australia for the i20N and i30N hatches. But don't be fronting up at the dealership tomorrow morning or something with a large duffel bag of used non-sequential 50s with very little cocaine residue in the mad hope that you will drive home in one of the most fun experiences that a human being can have with his trousers still buckled. It's not going to work like that, dude, sorry to say. It's still going to take you six months to get your car. If you want the i30 sedan, and I think it's more or less available now, but you'd really want to wait until early 2024 for that one because, you know, upgrades. This video is sponsored by Bluetti. If you need portable power or a home battery backup system in the event of a power failure, Bluetti can help. The AC500 is a proper monster. It's the brains of a modular home battery backup system. You can add various B300S battery modules as you need them. This is a five kilowatt system that will surge to 10 kilowatts. Briefly, it's got multiple outputs like pure sine wave, 240 volts AC, 12 volts DC and USB plus inductive charge pads for devices on top as well. And you can put multiple power inputs into it, including solar. The B300S battery modules are 3,072 watt hours a piece, and you can add up to six of those for a massive 18.4 kilowatt hours of total home battery backup. If your electrician wires it in, this thing will function as a 24 seven uninterruptible power supply. You might not even know that the grid has actually gone down. Your lights, etc., will be on Everyone else in the street, not so much. So, yay. There's also a slightly smaller but philosophically similar modular system based on the AC300 unit. There's a sale on both of these right now too. Link in the description. If you buy before the 18th of September, AC300 system buyers can add a Bluetti PV350 solar panel for just 89 bucks, and the AC500 system buyer, possibly you, will get a free trolley for their system. Link in the description, and thanks to Bluetti, a rock solid supporter of this channel for several years now. Okay, so N car availability has been officially upgraded to slightly less shit. Yes. Essentially, if you front at the dealer with a deposit and you allude to that cash-stuffed low coke residue duffel under the floorboards in bedroom two, perhaps, in your stash house, they will actually order the car for you now. Previously, the order books have been closed for about a year. Hyundai will make the vehicle in probably the next month or so, and then it's going to take about four months to get down here on a ship, provided the ship doesn't go all Fremantle Highway en route, of course. All the EVs, they were fine, dude. They were just driven off miraculously, just saying. i20N, probably the car I'd buy when I think about it. A bit more analogue, a bit more accessible, you know. That's made in Turkey, and the i30N, which is faster, a bit more refined, comes out of the Czech Republic. Not exactly straightforward shipping to Shitsville from either location. Like, dude, so much of planet Earth in the way. And, of course, good luck docking that ship in the Czech Republic in the first place. Czech Republic and Turkey, like, they do seem out of the way places to make cars, don't they? At least they do to me. I can't actually wait until the car industry realises the hilarious untapped potential of perhaps outsourcing manufacturing to proper axis of evil countries. Imagine how cheap the labour might be there. Perhaps Mercedes-Benz might open a C-Class factory in Iraq. 
later this year. I'd like to see that. Volkswagen might build future Polos in Syria. Stellantis might make Jeeps in North Korea. With engines sourced from Russia. Could make for some very interesting press releases, couldn't it? Globalisation, dude. Shit, yeah. Can you imagine how cheap it would be to build Range Rovers in Afghanistan? And this would have no effect whatsoever on reliability. They might even get better. It's a possibility. They couldn't get worse. So, where were we? I-20Ns and I-30Ns are unreserved pants-on fun. You could have his and hers I-30Ns and a spare I-20N for less than the price of a single BMW M3 competition and there would actually be enough cash left over for a decent holiday. Imagine that. Not saying that they're the same thing at all, like the M3 for the cachet, the sheer speed and intimidation, because they do look back at you, those BMW M3 competitions, and they mainly go like, dude, is that all you got? I hate that. And I love it at the same time. I don't know what that says about me, but there you go. Hyundai N car for the fun, though. They are such fun. Fun is, I guess, pretty hard to define objectively, but those N hatches, they're like Tiffany from the office deadpanning you and saying, what's wrong with just right here on the desk? So the reason you might want to wait until 2024 before ripping up the floorboards in bedroom number two vis-a-vis -vis the i30 sedan N there's a raft of upgrades to the i30 sedan N and they are imminent. And this is so confusing, right? It's called the Avante N in South Korea and the Elantra N in America and also in civilized countries. In summary, what you're gonna get is tweaked engine mounts, new bushes in the steering and rear suspension, new hardware for unspecified electronic suspension control components. They're also tweaking the gearbox yoke. They're putting in a low friction UJ in the steering, tweaking the servo assistance, better air ducting at the front to improve forced convection over the radiator and the brakes. ESC gets a tweak and they've added insulation to the front brake hoses. So yay, approved. Well done, dudes. I'm sure this has made it a better car, incrementally. And they've tweaked the hair and makeup, obviously, to give the train spotters something to obsess over. Always nice. After this i30N drought, you would probably want all that 2024 good stuff, you know, for the sedan. They've also launched what they would call a film, but which is actually a video because, hey, dedicated to what they call... <coughs> enthusiasts. <sighs> this is what passes for clever in corporate communications. The so-called film is also nauseating, frankly. Doubtless, it's a shoe-in for the Academy Award in extreme corporate wank, when it could have been so clever, you know, had any actual car enthusiasts been consulted in its production. I'll link to that in the description. Have a watch when you get time. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm being just ever so slightly harsh. They do live at mediocrity heights. And they teeter on the border of excellence from time to time, just the next suburb over. And then just when that permanent residency visa looks like a shoe-in, some senior executive genius keeps shooting the whole show in the vegetables. I don't know how they manage it. Still, I guess it is kind of refreshing for the product to be better than the marketing wank. With so many other cars, this is reversed, like it's the other way around, isn't it? Not to name names. Volkswagen Golf GTI. Two final points, I suppose, to complete the rich tapestry of enthusiasm. What's going to happen to the Kona N, which leaked out of a lab in Wuhan originally, if memory serves? Proper genetic freak, that car, but also fun. Well, officially, following the launch of the new Kona, an N version is being tantalisingly prick-teased under the rubric of 
it's under consideration. Like, we're thinking about it, officially. I'm tipping if they do one, and they will, it's going to be electric only. So watch this space, dude. And speaking of genetic freaks, the electric abomination known as the Ionic 5N is also out of the blocks. <laughs> or at least it will be here in Australia on September the 22nd to 24 at the Southern Insufferable Twat Convention, also known as the Melbourne EV Show. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a free ticket. Second prize, two free tickets. Ionic 5N is just $75,000 more than an i30N. $40,000 more than an Ionic 5 Epic. 6.4 kilowatt hours more battery than the Epic. Total of 84 kilowatt hours. So, this is a vehicle that weighs roughly as much as a Toyota Hilux Rogue dual cab 4x4 and with a wheelbase to match. It's freaking huge. And the same power as a $600,000 Ferrari 296 GTB Auto. What could possibly go wrong? 2.1 tonnes and 478 kilowatts. It needs four 11-inch wide Pirelli P0s to have any vestigial hope of remaining on the road and brakes to match, of course. Given that... Jesus. Given that copper and nickel and lithium and cobalt are in such preposterously short supply, and given that the move to EVs is being done to solve a CO2 problem, however imperfectly, I would argue that cars like this are an unrecognised form of social insult, dressed up in the cloak of insufferable twat virtue. On the one hand, you've got one insufferable twat in a $125,000 Hyundai Ioniq 5 EV, wondering why he can't get laid, <laughs> tying up all those scarce resources and just being a prat generally. And on the other hand, you might have five 17 kilowatt hour batteries that could take five coal dependent houses properly off the grid and reduce dependency on coal, which all but the abjectly brain dead no is the main game in play here with EVs. This car is almost but not quite as ridiculous as a Kia EV9 or Polestar 2. And they're selling it again, as if it's like some limited edition Nike Air Jordan, albeit orders of magnitude more expensive, i.e. online only in limited drops, meaning brief time-based windows of availability. Such is the pull, I suppose, of an insufferable twat magnet. Although... I do give them full points on this. 0.6 Gs of regenerative braking. Like, Jesus, dude. If it can do that at 100 Ks an hour, the brakes, this is just the regen brakes, are going to be generating 350 kilowatts of regenerative braking power. That's insane. And if it can do that at 150 on a racetrack, that's roughly half a megawatt of regenerative braking like Jesus I do hope the tires can keep up and what I really want to see here flowing from this ridiculous technology is I want to see a one make race series with this car but only using regen brakes like no hydraulic brake system what a fantastic spectator sport it would of course be far more socially responsible for anyone to buy an i30n and spend the balance of 75 grand on things that actually reduce CO2. Ionic 5N is a preposterous car in every sense, although not quite as preposterous as a Kia EV9 or Polestar 2. At least they're not pretending it's green yet. <laughs>